let's look at an amazing game where the white king did a legendary walk right in the middle of the game in order to checkmate the black king so this epic game was played between nigel short and ian timmon both of them are famous grandmasters and nigel started the game with e4 ian replied with knight to f6 going into the alicans defense nigel played e5 immediately attacking the knight knight moved to d5 and now nigel played d4 building a strong center controlling key squares in the opponent's territory as well as gaining a lot of space right in the opening ian replied with d6 immediately challenging the center and here nigel played knight to f3 providing extra defense to his strong center if black captures the pawn then white can capture back with the knight and then this knight would be controlling a lot of important squares in the opponent's territory so therefore black decided to put more pressure on the center by playing g6 so by playing g6 black is planning to fianchetto his bishop and thereby put a lot of pressure on the strong center of the white white develops his another minor piece bishop to c4 and thereby attacking the centralized knight of black knight moves to b6 attacking the bishop and bishop moves to the b3 square and thereby maintaining a strong control on this a2 g8 diagonal as well as keeping an eye on this weak f7 pawn also since black is mostly likely gonna castle on the king side and the king is gonna come on the g8 square so keeping the bishop on this diagonal is a very good idea for white black plays bishop to g7 adding extra pressure on this strong center and is also preparing to castle quickly in the game white plays an early queen to e2 to fortify the center and now black plays knight to c6 adding more pressure on this center as you can see all of these black pieces are putting a lot of pressure on the strong center of the white but currently it is well defended by white's pieces over here but since the pressure over here is building up and the center is about to open at any point of time in the game that is why white quickly castles here now i know a lot of you must be wondering this might not be a good move for white because black can now simply play bishop to g4 pinning this knight to the queen and thereby affecting his ability to defend these center pawns but if black plays such a move then this is a mistake why because though this bishop is pinning this knight but this bishop is undefended and black's king is currently uncastled so taking advantage of this situation white can simply win an extra pawn over here with the move bishop takes f7 check if king takes bishop then white can now play knight to g5 check checking the black king as well as revealing a discovered attack on this undefended bishop over here king moves to f8 and now queen takes bishop simply wins the piece back and now black is down upon and has also lost the right to castle his king therefore in this situation black cannot make the mistake of playing bishop to g4 right away therefore ian here first castled his king and now this bishop g4 threat is obviously there so white simply stops that threat by playing h3 controlling the square with his pawn now now since black's king is castled and white has a strong bishop over here on this diagonal so black decides to kick this bishop by playing a5 so that he can play a4 in the next move and start a rather queen side attack in the white's territory but white immediately stops all of these plans with the move a4 and now since there is not much that black can do on the queen side or on the king side of the game so he decides to open up the center and since black's pieces look a bit cramped up so he thinks it's a good idea to exchange some pieces in the center in order to get some space for his pieces so he plays d takes e5 white plays pawn takes pawn and now knight jumps to the d4 square attacking white's queen as well as putting pressure on both of these pieces white captures the knight back and black captures back with his queen and now the center has opened up and black is putting a lot of pressure on the white's e5 pawn it's being double attacked so white defends it with rook to e1 black feels that this e5 pawn of white is a clear target because white cannot get more of his pieces for the defense of his pawn he cannot move this pawn ahead because then that will simply weaken this king side diagonal of the white king also getting the bishop over here to defend this pawn would not be a very good idea because it puts the bishop in a very odd situation so since white would not be able to defend this pawn with a lot of pieces so black thinks it would be a very good idea to stop this pawn from advancing further and getting exchanged and therefore he plays 
is the move e6. So by playing e6, this pawn cannot move forward. Also, this diagonal which this bishop was eyeing is kind of closed and this f7 pawn is now in a much better position than what it was earlier. And now black can focus on getting more of his pieces to target this weak pawn over here. Maybe by getting this knight over here. So although e6 stops the advancement of this pawn as well as closes this diagonal, but the drawback of this move is that it is shutting off the lines for this light squared bishop. This bishop is now still not developed in the game and it is being blocked by his own pawn. So black will really have to move this knight somewhere, play either e6 or e5 and then Fianchetto his light squared bishop on this diagonal. Only then this bishop would come to life. And now white plays knight to d2, developing another piece. And the idea of playing it to the d2 square and not to the c3 square is that from d2, this knight is planning to go to the f3 square from where it can not only attack this queen and provide defense to this pawn, but it can always stay ready here and assist other pieces of white in order to launch a deadly attack on black's king side. Black plays knight to d5, centralizing his knight and also preparing to play e6 followed by bishop to d7 in order to develop his other bishop on an open strong diagonal. White plays knight to f3, attacking black's queen as well as providing extra protection to this pawn. Black moves the queen to c5 and now here white plays queen to e4. White is planning to move his queen to the king side of the board and eventually exchange this dark squared bishop of black which is kind of the only defender over here in the black's king side territory. After which it would be very easy for white to launch a deadly attack on black's king with the help of all of these pieces on the board. Black starts to sense some danger with this last queen to e4 move and he doesn't want to deal with any kind of kingside attack so he plays queen to b4 offering an exchange of queens but white immediately refuses with the move bishop to c4. Black plays knight to b6 now double attacking this bishop over here but white simply defends it with b3. Here it looks like that white has played a very bad move because black can simply capture this bishop and mess up white's pawn structure. But white here is not very interested in dealing with this messed up pawn structure over here because he has a very strong kingside attacking plan given that the only pieces that are defending black's kingside is this rook and this bishop over here. And with this white strong pawn on e5, white has a very strong control of this f6 square which soon will become a hole after this bishop gets exchanged with white's dark squared bishop. And after white's last move, black realizes that his queen and this rook over here are lying in the same diagonal and white can very well take advantage of this by skewing his pieces with the move bishop to a3 so therefore black immediately moves his rook to the e8 square. Since black chose to play rook to e8 and not rook to d8 and since this file is completely open white plays rook to d1 taking control of this open file and also stopping black to play bishop to d7 and thereby delaying his development of pieces until the time that bishop doesn't get out of this back rank these rooks would not get connected so that makes black to fall behind in development since black can't play much over here he cannot get his bishop over here because it will get captured he cannot play b6 because that leaves this rook in the corner hanging so he plays queen to c5 White immediately moves his queen to the h4 square, planning to start a kingside attack and now white plays b6 because the queen is no longer over here. So now he plays b6 in order to fianchetto his bishop on this long diagonal. White attacks black queen with bishop to e3, queen moves to c6, thinking it would be a very good place to form a battery on this diagonal along with the bishop. And now white plays bishop to h6, offering to exchange pieces over here. Now black cannot really capture this bishop because then in that case both these squares will become a hole and it would be very easy for white to exploit these squares and launch a deadly attack on black's king. Since this bishop is the only defender of these two squares so black refuses to exchange bishops and takes it to the h8 square. White now penetrates black position with rook to d8. Black obviously cannot capture this rook otherwise he is getting mated very soon. 
because black's back rank is completely weak over here. So therefore, black plays bishop to b7, forming a strong battery on this long diagonal as well as defending his weak back rank by opening up lines for his other rook over here. Now since this rook is double attacked by black's pieces, white protects his rook with the move rook a to d1. And now since the pressure is increasing on the back rank in black's territory, black doesn't want white to exploit this weakness. So he plays bishop to g7, thinking that it would be a very good idea to get rid of this strong bishop over here because after these bishops are off the board and if these pieces get exchanged at the back rank, at least the king would have an escape square on the g7 which will save him from getting checkmated at the back rank. Now, if you're thinking that why bishop to g7 and why not just capture this rook? Well, capturing this rook is not a good idea because then black would simply get mated over here with all of these moves. So therefore, bishop to g7 is a better idea to first get rid of this strong bishop over here. White completely understands this idea and doesn't want to defuse his attack by exchanging his attacking pieces. So he plays rook a to d7. This rook is now on the 7th rank in the enemy's territory and is eyeing the important weak f7 pawn over here. Black really feels vulnerable so he decides to defend this point with rook to f8. And now white captures the bishop, king captures back and now rook 1 to d4. Black activates his other rook and now white starts the attack with queen f6 check. King moves to g8. And now look at this beautiful position. This pawn cannot move forward. This rook is kind of stuck over here and doesn't have any place to go. The king is stuck over here. He doesn't have any place to go. This rook cannot come here because it will get captured and it has only these four squares available which are useless. The queen and the bishop although are sitting on a strong diagonal but black doesn't have any kind of attacking plans over here although they are restricting the ability of this knight to move anywhere because if this knight moves anywhere else then that would be an immediate checkmate but except for this small threat that it's creating black is not able to help his king which is stuck on the king side of the board these pieces are kind of stuck the queen cannot move anywhere because it will simply get captured the only square it can come to is over here the bishop doesn't have any place to go so because black's pieces are kind of badly stuck and have very limited mobility white now launches a deadly attack with the move h4 the idea is to get this pawn to the h6 square where it can assist this queen to deliver a checkmate on the g7 square. Black obviously don't want to let that happen, so he immediately blocks the path of this pawn with h5. And now, how should white proceed further? He cannot move this knight because of this checkmate. If he moves the rook over here, then this rook gets captured. If white plays g4 in order to open up black's king side, then that would be a mistake because black can now play pawn takes pawn attacking the knight and forcing him to move somewhere else. You cannot move the knight, otherwise you are getting checkmated over here on these squares. So rook moves to d3 and now queen to e4. Black's queen is now centralized, putting a lot of pressure over here as well as is now able to help black's king to defend any kind of white's attack. So therefore, the pawn push over here is not working. So Nigel here comes with an exceptional brilliant idea. He decides to get his king's help in order to checkmate the black king. The plan is to get this king on the h6 square where it can assist white in delivering a checkmate on the g7 square. So with that bold idea in mind, Nigel starts the legendary king walk with the move king to h2. Black doesn't have anything much to play here. So he just moves his rook to the c8 square and now king moves to g3. Rook moves back to e8, black doesn't know what's happening exactly over here and now the king moves to f4 and black is completely shocked that white's king is coming out of his home, out of his comfort zone, right in the middle of the board in order to assist his attacking pieces to deliver a checkmate to the black king. And now Ian really feels that he should be doing something to save this checkmate. So he plays bishop to c8, threatening to capture this piece over here. But that's too late. Nigel here doesn't care of this rook anymore. He just simply plays king to g5. And at this point of time, it doesn't matter what black plays, he's absolutely losing. He's in a zugzwang position. And therefore, Ian resigned at this point of time in the game. Because if he captures this rook, then king can simply move to h6. And now it doesn't matter what black plays here, he cannot stop this checkmate. Let's go back. 
If he tries to save the checkmate with the move king to h7, then notice that this pawn is now pinned. So taking advantage of that, white can play queen takes g6 check, king moves to h8, queen h6 check, king moves to g8, and now king moves to f6. What an insane place to be. And black can't here do anything. He can simply try to delay the checkmate by a one or two moves, after which doesn't matter what he plays because any move would immediately lead to this checkmate. Let's go back. So isn't this an insane position? Look how beautifully this king came out on the board to make black resign this game. And because this king's walk was so unique and legendary in its kind, this game became very famous in the year 1991 and is always remembered as the game of the legendary king walk. Do you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And now here is the question of the day for you. Black is down in material by 5 points, but it is Black's turn in the game. So can you turn the tables? Let me know your answers in the comments box and I'll see you in the next video.